The supposedly fair and balanced news network Fox News decided to do a segment about Bernie Sanders and specifically talk about his Medicare for All plan, and the name of the segment is The Looney Left. I mean, have they just even given up the facade that they are fair and balanced in any way? Because if you have a segment called The Looney Left, I think it's safe to say you are officially just owning the fact that you are the Republican Party propaganda wing. But nonetheless, the host of this segment, Steve Hilton, he's British. So he's talking about this from the position of authority. You should, you know, believe what he's saying because he comes from a country with socialized medicine and he knows what he's talking about. So you should take him seriously above all else. The problem is he gets the most basic detail about his own healthcare system completely wrong, completely backwards. And there's a lot of other stupidity that you will hear in this segment. So let's watch it and then I have quite a bit to say. This week, presidential candidate Bernie Sanders announced a new extreme version of his health policy. Extreme. It would nationalize one eighth of the US economy in what would be the biggest act of economic centralization in the history of the world. Medicare for all is tonight's loony left. <laughs> All right, so I just want to, th look, I know something about this. I, I was in the UK, I worked in the UK government, the National Health Service, which is a mild version of what Bernie Sanders is proposing here. We tried to reform it, it's too centralized, it's too bureaucratic, we failed. The, I just want to focus not on the idea and wouldn't it be, not, yes, I'm, I'm all for universal coverage. I've said that many times, there are different ways of getting there through the marketplace. Mm -hmm. This, just think about the operational thing here, right? He published this bill. This is about, setting a budget, this is what they literally mean. For every hospital in America, every medical practice is gonna have a budget set by the federal government. They're gonna be paid on a quarterly basis by the federal government. Every single one, it's insanity. I think we're past insanity at this point with some of the policies that are coming out of the left. I mean, who, who cares? You don't need your private health insurance. Um, what I'd like to know is, you know, you have Medicare eligible candidates on the Democrat side. Are they on Medicare? No. <laughs> because if it's so great, they probably should be, Steve. But more importantly, these elected officials have these Cadillac insurance policies right. that go on for a lifetime. So instead of Medicare for all, why aren't they campaigning for my health care for all? Because they're getting supreme health care. This is getting more and more crazy by the day. We're talking about putting 20 million seniors off of their Advantage program. We're talking about 181 million people losing their private health insurance, killing over a half a million jobs, and decreasing yes. the amount of income into families. It's, well, it's insane. I believe at the core of this, it is furthering the competition of who can give out the most amount of stuff to win the Democrat primary. Yeah. That's what this is really about. Mm -hmm. right. Who can promise the most amount of stuff to win votes? It is so beyond realistic, it's almost not even worthy of even analyzing the policy, similar to the Green New Deal. But unfortunately, it, it is deadly serious because it's now gaining traction in the U.S. Senate. Right. We're supposed to treat a complete national takeover it's of unbelievable. something that 108 million people have private health care that have millions of jobs. Of course not. But what is serious is the Democrat Party has no principles. They just want power. Well, it's Whatever they need That's to it. do to defeat Donald Quick, Trump to give out the most money. Last thought here. Well, as a Canadian, someone who was born and raised Canadian, I do not want universal health care in any way. It's such a it's such a spectacularly bad idea that it's passed the California legislature three times, and even Governor <laughs> Jerry Brown vetoed it, saying there is no way we can afford it. If you can't do it here. Good point. Okay, well, that was um, certainly something. <laughs> wow. So, I don't even know where to begin. Let's just take it from the top. The guy from the UK literally said that what Bernie Sanders is proposing with Medicare for All goes further than the UK's national health system. He says, quote, the UK's national health service is a mild version of what Bernie Sanders is proposing. Do you know anything about your own healthcare system? In the UK, doctors and nurses are literally government employees. Is that what Bernie Sanders is proposing here? No, it is not. But what Medicare for All is, is a compromise between an entirely for-profit system and an entirely nationalized system, where the government is the single payer 
and doctors are still independent. We're not going to nationalize independent hospitals. We're not going to do that. We are going to be the single payer who will act on the behalf of every single American. That's what that is. It's the compromise. So to say that the UK doesn't go as far as Bernie's plan is so wrong. The opposite is actually true. Now, to be from the UK, that doesn't give you any legitimacy because you can still say very crazy things. But the point is that we want to make healthcare free at the point of service, and there are a number of ways to do that. There are health systems like the UK, there are single payer systems like Canada and hopefully the United States, and there are even private-based systems that are heavily subsidized and covered like in France, and that's an oversimplification, but there are various ways to do this. The point is we make healthcare free at the point of service. But this dunce literally said that what Bernie is proposing goes further than a national health system. I mean, it's in the name, national health system. The difference is obvious between single payer and national health system. Is Bernie Sanders proposing to make doctors government employees? No, he's not. Now, I'm assuming that Steve Hilton is just dumb and didn't know that, but if you honestly want to present yourself as a serious person, you have to get basic details right, especially if you're going to pitch yourself as the guy who knows about UK health laws. So, wow. Um, also, he says, for every hospital in America, it's going to have a budget set by the federal government. They're going to be paid on a quarterly basis. It's insanity. Okay, first of all, again, Bernie Sanders is not nationalizing hospitals. Like, I, I genuinely don't think he realizes this. He's not nationalizing hospitals. They can still be privately run, but the difference is that instead of us individually negotiating prices and paying bills, the government is going to do that on our behalf. And if they pay quarterly, why does that, why does that matter? Currently, if let's say you get hit with a $100,000 bill for a surgery, you're not going to be able to pay that off. You're going to have to make monthly payments. You may have to file bankruptcy. So it may be years before they get that payment. The hospital could be out of that money. So how is our current system preferable? He knows nothing and he calls it insanity. How is that insane? You're insane because you don't know what you're talking about. Now, additionally, Katrina Pearson says this is getting more crazy by the day. We're talking about putting 20 million seniors off of their Medicare Advantage programs. We're talking about 180 million people losing their private health insurance. Again, these people, they're, they're talking about something that they clearly know nothing about. Do you even know why Medicare Advantage exists? What Medicare Advantage does is it fills the gaps left open by Medicare currently. So what Bernie Sanders wants to do is he wants to close those gaps, improve Medicare, and then expand it so Medicare Advantage will no longer be necessary. So if you don't need Medicare Advantage because those holes in our current Medicare system are closed, then that's good. That's a good thing. Nobody just likes having Medicare Advantage because, you know, they think that the operator who you talk to if you call is lovely. It's a necessity. She also says that people are going to lose their private insurance. Well, you're not losing anything if you're gaining more stability, if you're gaining more care, if you can see any doctor and go to any hospital and you're not restricted to whoever is in your network. So these people are saying things really confidently, which makes them more believable, but they're completely wrong. They're getting it exactly backwards. And it's fucking loony to me. Now, Charlie Kirk says, this is about who can promise the most amount of stuff to win votes. No, it's actually about promising to use our tax dollars more wisely because it's not free if we're getting back what we invested in the economy. Whenever I pay my tax dollars, I'm expecting a return on that because our tax dollars is an investment. We're pooling resources to make society better. But currently, under the administration, who you constantly suck off and show for, Charlie, all they're doing is using our money for more wars to give tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires. So if you want to talk about freebies, don't pretend like that's something that is unique to Democrats and Bernie Sanders. Even if you're going to buy into this notion that what he's proposing qualifies as freebies in the first place. 
Republicans promise free stuff all the time. What do you think tax cuts are? What do you think increasing that military budget is? It's freebies to defense contractors. What do you think oil and gas industry subsidies are? It's freebies. So you need to be clear about where you stand. You're not necessarily inherently against freebies. You just don't want freebies going to the poor. You want it to benefit the rich because as MLK says, what the right wants is socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor. That's what you're about. So we can't have freebies. Only the rich can have freebies. And again, that's if we buy into this idea that what we're getting is freebies because it's not free if my tax dollars fund it. That's not free. If you go to the store and you buy an Xbox, for example, it's not free because you use your money to pay for that. So in the same line of thinking, if we are still using our money, our tax dollars to pay for healthcare, it's not free, is it? We're just actually having our tax dollars be used more wisely instead of blowing up brown people in the Middle East and North Africa. But these are smear merchants, they're liars, and this is Fox News. Now, I love how they brought on the Canadian to talk about how horrible Canada's healthcare is, and she didn't say specifically why it's bad. She just said, well, I'm a Canadian, and it's bad. Okay, well, what specifically is bad about it? Because I know a Canadian who thinks Canada's healthcare system is better than the United States, David Dole. So, he basically cancels you out. <laughs> But if I had to guess, if she were to go on to make an argument, she'd say something, something, wait times, and then I'd respond by saying, well, we have wait times here, and then she'd respond by saying, well, it's worse, and then I'd respond by saying, well, how many people die in Canada because of wait times, and she'd respond by saying, uh, Kyle's... And before I continue to talk more about the token Canadian, I have to note here, because I, I forgot about this, so Katrina Pearson says that Medicare for all would lead to 50,000 jobs being lost, and then... Charlie Kirk comes in and he says it's going to lead to millions of jobs being lost. Well, how much is it? Certainly, I think that it's important that we do a just transition so people in the insurance industry, they don't lose their jobs. But if, let's say, hypothetically speaking, there's no just transition and people end up losing jobs, but we get Medicare for all, is it worth it? Fuck yeah, it's worth it because losing your job is not as bad as dying because you don't have health insurance. These are two very different things here. Both of them are bad, but one of them is exponentially worse. So let's do what we can to make that transition a just transition. And Bernie Sanders is sensitive to this fact, as is Pramila Jayapal, who is proposing the House version. But they're trying to fearmonger because whatever they can possibly throw against Medicare for All, they just hope it sticks. They hope that some argument against it resonates. Now, back to the token Canadian. She alludes to the fact that this probably can't work because in California, Jerry Brown wouldn't even sign it in his very deep blue state. Except it never got on Jerry Brown's desk and Jerry Brown probably wouldn't sign it because he's a corporate Democrat and it was killed before it got to his desk by another corporate Democrat. But what we need to do is be very clear about the difference between state-run single-payer and national single-payer. Even though states should be moving towards their own version of single-payer, logistically speaking, it is easier to do that at the federal level because if a state like California acts as the single-payer in a market where there's still private insurance, if that means that they'd have to forego federal subsidies to become the single-payer, it is a lot more complicated. Now, that's still no excuse. They should still be trying to do what they can to move towards single payer, but is it more difficult at the state level? Yeah, it is because we live in an environment where California doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists among other states, so it's easier, and this is why it makes more sense to talk about single payer in the context of it being implemented at the federal level because that's just more logistically feasible because you have so many different dynamics at play here that it does make it more complicated for states to implement it now again i'm not saying that they should get a pass for not implementing it because you better be damn well trying to get your own version of single payer in the meanwhile but for the most part if we're going to talk single payer it just makes more sense logistically to do it nationally but Again, these are all bad faith actors making bad faith arguments against Medicare for All because they're on Fox News, they're rich, and they don't care. They don't care. And going back to Charlie Kirk real quick, one last thing I want to say, he rails against freebies, but he's not returning the freebies, the free money he's taking from right-wing billionaires who are funding his shitty organization that's supposed to be appealing to millennials, but only reaches boomers on Facebook. I mean... <laughs> 
These are all people who are failures, who are only propped up and successful because of right-wing money. So as much as they love the free market, they benefit from right-wing socialism. It's their own kind of condensed version of socialism. They just don't want socialism for you and I. They want rugged individualism for you and I and socialism for them. So that's all I'll say about this. Lots of wrong things said. Steve Hilton, um, as someone who's British, he really should know at least the basics when it comes to their national health system. He really should because it's embarrassing to think that Medicare for All goes further than the Britain NHS. That's honestly stupid.